Hello everyone. My name is Sarah and today I want to draw with you. More specifically, I want to show you how to draw concepts and ideas in an easy way. Everyone who wants can grab some sheets of paper and a pen or pencil and draw along. I will also give you time in between to try out some of the stuff I'll show. If you don't have paper and pen ready, I would advise you to go get it now while I go over the introduction. A couple of sheets of printer paper or a notebook both will work fine for this talk. If you can't or don't want to draw along right now, you can still follow this talk as a normal talk. Although you might have to wait from time to time while others are drawing. A PDF with all the drawing examples will be available if you find time to catch up later. So the style of drawing that we are going to use is not this realistic figure drawing you can see here. Our style will be much more symbolic, somewhat like the picture of a cat you can see here. Everyone can very quickly see this is a cat, and your brain and memory will work with this cat as they do with other pictures. So having this cat in your cat-related notes will attract people's attention, provide meaning quicker than if it were just text, and will help them remembering it better. Even having this cat in your non-cat-related notes will have an effect, as cats tend to always do. This way of combining text with simple symbolic illustrations is called sketchnoting. Sketchnoting has gained a lot of popularity over the recent years and has found its place in the family of visual facilitation, graphic recording, visual storytelling, and so on. The drawing skills we will learn here and the practice of visual note-taking and sketchnoting in general can be used on a lot of different occasions, both for oneself to actively listen and remember better or for others to convey ideas or teach concepts. Here are some examples. The first one is a couple of travel sketch notes from a trip to Scotland I did a couple of years ago. And I keep these sketch notes together with my photos from the trip to get a more complete picture when trying to remember it. Another example is this sketch by Denise Yu um, on Linux namespacing. Now it is both possible to draw such sketch, sketch notes for oneself or for others to give an overview of a topic you want to teach or write a tutorial about. The next example is another one by me, which is an excerpt of my sketch notes from the books Neurotribes by Steve Silverman. And this is a fairly heavy book with lots of contents, so I thought I might want to remember things from it without having to read it all again, and these sketch notes I made help me do it. The last example I want to show you are the wizard scenes by Julia Evans, which I admit do contain a lot more text than the examples I showed before. But the text is mixed up with images here and there, which is exactly what our definition of sketchnoting said. So my message here is that sketch notes don't have to be really heavy on the images. They can also have more text and just a couple of images in between. So let's not lose any more time and get sketchy. But wait, where do we start? Lots of engineering concepts are not straightforward to visualize. If I would tell you, for example, to draw me classes and functions, you would very probably and rightfully ask, how do I do that? Well, the good news is, things can often be built up of circles and rectangles, and those are not too hard to draw, or at least we can easily practice it. So to warm up, let's draw some circles and rectangles. What I expect you to create is something like this picture. So you don't have to draw strictly circles and rectangles. You can mix it up with ellipses, parallelograms, etc. We will take 30 seconds, time starting when I have my timer ready, which is now. And time's up. Next, let's start with an easier example that shows how things can be built up from circles and rectangles. And you can draw along with me. We start with the word code, 
which symbolically is often represented by this combination of characters. Now, as a web developer, this might suit me well, and I can easily draw a screen around this with some rectangles and a circle to end up with a nice rep representation of web-related code. But what if I want to draw a different kind of code, a specific language even? Another way I draw code is by drawing a file and writing an extension inside. This is again done with a rectangle with one corner cut off and two more lines over there. Then you simply write the extension inside. With this, we can now draw different kinds of code. Next, let's draw the verb coding, programming, implementing something. For that, we might want to use a laptop. And laptops are very easy to draw with rectangles and deformed rectangles. Here's a laptop from one side. Let me add a symbol right here, as laptops of some brands tend to have. Behind this laptop, you can draw a person with some circular lines to represent someone coding. And here's a laptop from the other side, showing the screen and the keyboard. The screen can now again be used to add a symbolic representation of code, for example, by adding a code file extension. The next step in our code-related vocabulary might be to draw a server. The server also consists of rectangles, as it's just a box of certain dimensions, perhaps with some buttons at the front. Once this is ready, we can now easily send stuff to the server by drawing a simple arrow, for example, from this laptop over here or from the other one over there. And we can send stuff from the server to the World Wide Web by drawing a bigger arrow away from the server. I wish it always went that easy. So there's already a lot we can draw based on circles and rectangles. But what if I want to draw a concept that is a bit more abstract or really complex? We will come back to our classes and functions example later. But for now, let's take an easier word, conference. Let's suppose I want to draw a conference, but I don't know where to start. There's an easy trick for us for this that we as developers know very well, and that's Google it. Now, as with coding problems, the thing is to know how. And for easy representations of things, the keyword to use is icon. So here's my Google image page for conference icon. So I think I can draw something like this, right? It's again, mostly circles and rectangles. I start with a standing rectangular shape in the middle, putting a horizontal rectangular shape half hidden behind it on top. Then I draw some circular lines for the person standing behind the desk and a couple of more lines for the microphone. Sometimes icons are a bit too simplified though. If you want a little bit more complex drawings, you can try the words clipboard or cartoon. Cartoon in particular is useful when you want to draw famous people or politicians and you don't know how to characterize them. Now we've got this icon representation of our conference, which is easy enough to draw. But if I draw a conference, I often want to stress the community, get together part of it. So I want to draw people, which brings me to the next topic, drawing people. The easiest way we all know to draw people is stick people. Stick people are very versatile. We can bend them in different directions to make them jump, walk, or even run. Or is that last one more kickboxing? Before we continue, let's take 30 seconds of time to draw some stick people. There are more ways to draw people down. And one easy alteration you can make is give your stick person a body, which can be rectangular, elliptical, or something in between. Or what did you think about a heart-shaped person? Let's again take 30 seconds to draw some of those.
Another fun and easy way to draw a person is star people. Star people are drawn by drawing a star while replacing one dent with a circle for the head. You can again play around with the shape to make a star person run, hold something, or sit down and meditate. Let's take 30 seconds time to draw some star people. The last and perhaps the easiest way to draw people is tooth people. Tooth people exist of a basic tooth kind of shape with a head on top. The cool thing about tooth people is that they are very easy to draw in crowds. For example, here's a row of tooth people and here's a bunch more of them. Now I just have to add some attributes such as a megaphone and a banner to make a protest. I'll give you again 30 seconds to draw your own crowd of tooth people. So now that we know all of those ways to draw people, let's take some time to add more people to our conference and make it more like, like the conferences we remember from before Anno 2020. You can now take one and a half minutes time to draw some situations that come to mind when thinking of a conference. Meanwhile, I will play a stop motion video of a conference situation I've drawn. My stop motion of the conference is now finished, but we'll have 30 more seconds to draw yours. Now let's get back to a protest we've drawn before. If you want this image to convey more meaning, it might be a good idea to write some text inside of that banner. However, there's one important rule about writing text in boxes. That is, text first, box later. For our protest, this means we'd better remove our banner and write our slogan first. For example, fight climate change. Once this is done, we can add our banner again around the text this way making it easier for everything to fit in. So here are some other boxes around with text inside. You can now take 30 seconds to draw your own boxes around some text you wrote.
We've drawn things and people, and we've added some text to provide more meaning to our illustration. But we haven't talked about faces and emotions yet, so let's do that now. Everyone can draw a face with two eyes, a nose, and a mouth. But what if you want to be a bit more expressive? First thing, let's have our face looking around a little bit. This can be done by drawing the whole face in the top, bottom, left, or right half of the head. Mind that it often looks better to have the whole face visible, even if the person is looking left or right. So this often looks better than this. The next thing I want to show you is an emotion matrix for drawing faces. The empty matrix looks like this. On top we have three possible mouth shapes, and on the left we have three possible eyebrow positions. I'll give you 30 seconds to draw the empty matrix. Filling the matrix requires repeating the mouth shapes top to bottom and repeating the eyebrows left to right. Like this, we get different emotions from scared laughing to angry laughing, really worried, really sad, and very angry. Looking at this matrix can therefore help you draw more expressive faces. I'll give you 30 seconds to finish your emotion matrix. Faces are not limited to humans and animals, by the way. You can add faces to things as well. Here are a couple of examples. What thing would you want to give a face? And which emotion would it express? Let's take 30 seconds to draw a thing with a face. The next thing I want to do with you is the drawing concept challenge. We already have the words coding, conference, and protest. Let's challenge ourselves to draw some more concepts. Every prompt has a harder, more abstract word on the left and an easier word on the right. The easier word is meant for kids that might be following along or people who are getting a bit tired by now. Also, the challenges get harder as we go. So if at some point you want to switch to the easier prompt, that's completely fine too. After drawing time, I will explain you how I've drawn the abstract prompt. It would be really cool if you feel confident to share your images from the challenge on Twitter or on the Slack, conference Slack channel, so that I and others can see the diversity of possibilities to draw concept in a short amount of time. If you do so, Please use the PlumConf drawing challenge hashtags so people can find it. Let's get on with our first challenge, which is deployment. Let's take one minute time to draw deployment. We are halfway through.
and time's up. We've seen an easy representation of deployment already at the beginning of this talk, being a laptop, a server, and an arrow in between. But if we want, we can make this image more complex. For example, by adding our version control system to the mix. I've used GitLab here, but you could use the GitHub logo or just the plain Git server, depending on the stack and drawing skills you use. This is another valid representation of deployment. But we could add even more to this picture. For example, a code review cycle, as you can see here. And I've stopped at this point, but this doesn't have to be the end. You can add containerization, continuous integration pipelines, or even specific Git commands or code review rules at the relevant places in this picture, making it more detailed step by step. Let's get on with our next challenge, which is diversity. Let's take one minute time to draw diversity. That's 30 seconds finished now. And time's up. If I have to draw diversity, I tend to keep it very abstract. Therefore, this is my go-to image for diversity. It's a bunch of people with differently shaped head. The, the, advantage I, the advantage, I think, is that this image represents a lot of different forms of diversity. It can at the same time mean people with different types of brains, different bodily functions, different opinions, who look differently, or have different emotions. If you want to go less abstract and, for example, focus on the inclusion of people with disabilities, you can easily add some attributes to this image to do so. For example, here I've added a wheelchair and a guiding stick for a blind person. But if you want to go very concrete and, for example, draw the inclusion of women in tech, you could draw some women faces, but you would have to take care to make your women more diverse too. These women are not very diverse. So I'll add some more to improve that. That's not perfect, but definitely better. So the more concrete you want your diversity drawing to be, the more detailed you also have to be able to represent different features of diversity. So if you are not that confident yet drawing different faces and other attributes, you can exercise that, of course. But in the meantime, you can also think of a more abstract representation that will help you out. Let's get on with our next challenge, which is data. Let's take one minute time to draw data. For the easier prompt, I've chosen dinosaur here, which is not that easy to draw, but which is, can be a useful image. For example, uh, if you want to represent a legacy code or just because dinosaurs are cool. We're halfway through. And we're done. For data, I recycled my inked October drawing for this prompt, which is a low fidelity metaphor for unstructured versus structured data using clothes. Metaphors are great because they allow you to draw something completely different while still illustrating a tech concept. They can be a bit hard at first, 
So you might have to explicitly brainstorm for them. And you have to watch out not to take them too far. So don't expect your metaphor to represent every detail of the tech concept correctly. But as an introduction to a topic, for example, on top of a blog post or at the beginning of a presentation, they work great as they tend to really catch people's attention and stay in their memory for longer. And here's my dinosaur, favorite dinosaur picture. Um, but let's get on with our next and last um, challenge, which is classes and functions, uh, which we talked about earlier, but didn't draw yet. As these are technically two concepts, I give you two minutes time for this. first 30 seconds are over and I want to remind you that you can google one of those concepts uh, together with the word icon to find out if there are some uh, already some easy drawings for the concept We have one minute through now. Um, if you want, if you haven't find any, found anything by now and you think this prompt is too difficult, you can always switch to the easier prompt, which is robot. And uh, robot drawings are really great to illustrate any, um, any uh, sketch note or note of anything because um, yeah, you can have a robot say something or you can uh, just add a robot to, to, to your illustration for, for filling up some space. We have 15 seconds left now. For this challenge, I started from the idea of a cogwheel representing a piece of logic. And this idea is not new or particularly specifically mine. Uh, if you uh, Google um, logic or function or whatever, you will find a lot of cogwheel, um, cogwheels in there. So this is a well established um, representation of a piece of logic. And I went on to draw a function as something which contains this piece of logic and has an input and an output. For a class, I first saw it as a box to put different pieces of logic that belong together inside. But a class is more than that. A class is also a blueprint, a description that can be instantiated with specific values. So I made my box into a stamp to represent this as well. Then as a bonus, I added an instance of my class where specific color values have been used. And this is how, for this challenge, I've drawn classes and functions. In another situation, I might draw it differently. And you might have drawn it completely differently as well. I'm looking forward to see different images from the challenge on Twitter or on the Slack channel. One last thing I want to show you is how all of this comes together to become a sketch note of a talk or a meeting, blog post or book. I'll demonstrate this by making a sketch note for this talk. I usually do black and white sketch notes with one accent color to highlight stuff, and I use a gray marker to make some shadows in the end. Some people do make full color sketch notes, but black and white with a highlight color is certainly a great way to start. First thing to start with is writing the title. This can easily be done beforehand, so you don't have to worry about it anymore once the talk or meeting starts. I also add the name of the speaker and some kind of box around the title, in this case, a text balloon. I can add a small speaker portrait if I have time and skills for that, or an anonymous person, 
or like I'll do, I will do here, just the name. If the speaker has a Twitter handle, I'll add that as well. And in this case, as I know already, we are going to learn how to draw specific concepts. I'll define my page in two to make some place for this drawing vocabulary at the bottom. So at the top, I'm going to summarize the content of the talk. And at the bottom, I draw all the concepts we encounter, such as code, protest, conference, and others. So the talk is about sketch noting. And the first important thing that has been said is a short definition of what that means. The next part is about building things up from circles and rectangles. And we've, seen, we've seen, also seen how we can use the keyword icon to Google for Im easy images of concepts. After that, we learned how to draw different kinds of people. And this important rule about text in boxes, boxes was mentioned. Last but not least, we learn about faces and the emotion matrix. And I'm lucky enough to still have enough space to draw it as a whole, as I think that is a really important thing we can learn from this talk. Then, for the drawing vocabulary, we've drawn code first, then programming, followed by conference and protest. Next, we have the vocabulary from our drawing challenge with deployment, an abstract and concrete version of diversity, data, and here I've used the database icon as a representation for data, which is a good and easy way to draw data. And last but not least, we have classes and functions, which I also have drawn slightly differently here than I did before, but that's fine. Finally, I take my gray marker to add some shadows and my color marker to add some highlights. This gives the image a, a bit more depth. And ready is my sketch note for this talk. With this, also the talk itself has come to an end. So here's the Twitter handles once more for posting your drawings. This has been a quick and shallow, a quick pace and shallow introduction to sketch noting. If you want to learn more, here are some resources. Be sure to check out the YouTube channel of Let's Sketch Tech. They did an amazing online conference earlier this year and recorded all the talks and workshops. So that's pretty cool. There are endless books about sketchnoting. Choose one you like. I don't have recommendations to give here. What I do want to recommend though, is an online resource called Learner's Sketchnoting Guide, which is built up like a self-paced course with lots of exercises. Thank you for listening. My name is Sarah. I'm Aspgirl Codes on Twitter, and I'm looking forward to see your drawings from the talk and answering your questions.